thank you, Lord. I want to encourage you to praise the Lord because I told you at the beginning of this convention that the Almighty God says He's going to do a new thing. Now today, for the first time in our history, in our maternity center here, a woman gave birth to four children. Go ahead, bless his holy name. Give God all the glory. Give him all the adoration. He's worthy to be praised. He is a great God. He's the Almighty. There's nothing he cannot do. He's a God who can do a new thing. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Go ahead, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Oh, Father, we want to bless your holy name. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. We want to give you all adoration. Thank you for all the testimonies. Thank you for doing a new thing in our midst. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed, 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 blessed be your holy name. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be magnified. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Blessed, 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 blessed be your holy name. Remo Shakivrande Remokotonda. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all adoration. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I want you to pray a very special prayer tonight. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, Remember me too and do something new in my life. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Remember me too and do something new in my life. Do something new, something great, something wonderful, something divine, something miraculous. Remember me too and do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Father, do something new in my life. 
Please, Lord, do something new, something new, something miraculous, something great, something divine, something beyond my wildest dreams, something beyond my wildest expectations. Almighty God, do something new in my life tonight. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia. Unchangeable changer, the rock of ages, the lion of the tribe of Judah, wonderful counselor, everlasting father, mighty God, prince of peace, Alpha, Omega, the beginning, the ending, the one who is, the one who was. The one who is to come, the Almighty. Glory be to your holy name. Father, glory be to your holy name. Thank you for what you've already done in our midst. Thank you for what you will do tonight. Thank you ahead for what you will do tomorrow. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We cover all the testimonies in the blood of the Lamb. Let them be permanent in Jesus' name. And all over the world, in all the various viewing centers, in all the homes of those who might be watching online, by television, by radio, by any means possible. Tonight, Lord, do something new. In the lives of all of us, something great, something wonderful, something miraculous, something unique, doing our lives in Jesus' name. And at the end of it all, take all the glory and give us the blessings. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, 
Well, shake hands with two or three people and tell them God will surprise you tonight. And then you may please be seated. Well, just like I told you, a woman gave birth to a set of four children, three boys, and one girl. <laughs> Tonight, the devil shall flee. Say it loud and clear, the devil shall flee. James chapter 4, verse 7. James 4, verse 7. And like we did the days before, halfway through the sermon, there will be an altar call, and then we'll continue with the praying section of the summer. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Tell your neighbor, the devil will flee from me tonight. You better say it as if you mean it. There are two principal forces in the world. Darkness and light. Causes and blessing. It will interest you to know that the computer uses that principle darkness light in out on off that's the principle on which the computer is based the joy of it is no matter how tiny the light it will overcome darkness. That's why I'm sure that I'm talking to some overcomers here tonight. In First John chapter 3, verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of Satan. In the name that's above every other name, all the works of darkness in your life shall be destroyed tonight. The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verses 1 and 14, John 1, verses 1 and 14, that Jesus Christ is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the word. And Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. It was the word that was going out to heal 
and to deliver. And then he came in flesh to set the captives free. The Bible says in John chapter uh, in Luke chapter eleven, verse twenty-one to twenty-two, Luke eleven, twenty-one to twenty-two. It said, "When a strong man armed keeps his house, all his goods are safe." But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overpowers him, then he can take away everything he has. I want to announce to you tonight, the stronger man is here. And his name is Jesus. Let me hear you shout that name loud and clear. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 Colossians 2 verse 15 says Jesus spoiled the principalities and powers you know the meaning of spoiled he fought all forces of darkness and reduced them to nothing So Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 to 22, Ephesians 1 18 to 22 says, is now seated far above all principalities and powers. Far above. Far above witches, far above wizards, far above herbalists, far above the devil himself. And Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, Philippians 2, 9 to 11 tells us, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every evil force that have been tormenting you will bow tonight. They must bow to the name of Jesus. I don't say they will bow to you. I say they will bow to the name of Jesus. You remember the testimony of one fellow who got so full of demons he couldn't even sit down. He could only lie down helplessly. He wouldn't eat. He wouldn't go to the bathroom. He was just a vegetable. And they carried him to a butemeta. And when they brought him in and they told me the story, I said to him, Young man, I want to pray for you. Kneel down. He said, I can't kneel down. I said, I command you to kneel down. He said, In whose name? I said, in the name of Jesus. He said, that is different. He got up, knelt down. I prayed for him. I said, stand up now and go home. He said, I can't stand. I said, I command you to stand. He said, in whose name? I said, in the name of Jesus. He said, that is different. And he got up 
and began to go home. I command today in the mighty name of Jesus every evil force that has been tormenting you they must flee tonight. In Mark chapter 1, verse 23 to 27, Mark 1, 23 to 27, the Bible tells us that Jesus came into the temple and saw there a man with an unclean spirit. As soon as he came in, the demon recognized who has come in. And began to, to yell. Well, Jesus told him to shut up and get out. And he obeyed. In Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, the Bible mentioned a woman called Mary Magdalene who had seven demons. Jesus set her free. In Mark chapter 5, verse 2 to 15, Mark 5, verse 2 to 15, the Bible talks of a man who had a legion of demons. And according to Bible scholars, a legion means at least 6,000 demons. One word from Jesus Christ. And they all fled. So whether it is one demon, or seven, or thousands, one word from the commander-in-chief of all the hosts is going to send them packing tonight. I want to welcome you to the presence of the one called the Lord of hosts. I want to welcome you into the presence of the commander-in-chief of all the forces, whether on earth, or in heaven, or underneath the earth. I used to think that the Lord of hosts means is the commander-in-chief of the angels alone. Until the Lord showed me he is the commander-in-chief of all hosts, whether angelic or demonic or human. Because at the name of Jesus, every name must bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things underneath the earth. If you believe that, let me hear you say amen. I'm trying to prepare you for what God wants to do tonight. So fasten your seat belts. So I want to remind you, those of you who have had the testimony, and tell those of you who have not had it before, of an incident that happened in one of the countries in Central Africa. I went to that nation for a program. And we were going to the center where we will meet. And they gave me dispatch riders to clear the way for me because there are tra traffic. Uh, it's a little worse than that of Lagos. So we were going, 
and the traffic was tough and it, it looks clear that we are going to be late because in this particular nation that's why I'm not mentioning the name it's as if the drivers just don't respect the policemen at all so dispatch riders were going ahead but they, they were not making any, move, any progress at all all of a sudden a madman came out of nowhere and I mean he was mad you look at his eyes you can see demons dancing saliva trooping out of the corner of the mouth everything you know this is mad mad and he came in front of my car come to one driver slap the bonnet and made a sign to the right and the driver got out of my way quickly slapped the bonnet of the one on the left a sign to the left within a short period of time he had cleared the way for me all the way to the end of the traffic jam and when he finished clearing the jam he came to my side of the car and bowed of us in the car we were surprised as putting it mildly my children were in a state of shock I said to them I told you my father is the Lord of hosts he commands demons too so tonight he is about to demonstrate his almightiness every demon every evil force that had been disturbing you they must flee tonight now to get the devil to flee the bible says we are to do two things number one he said submit yourself to God why because first John chapter 3 verse 8 first John chapter 3 verse 8 says he that commits sin is of the devil first John chapter 3 verse 8 if you are a sinner you belong to the devil and so the devil has a right to lay claim to you and so if we begin to pray and we are going to pray some dangerous prayers here tonight and we begin to command the devil He's likely to look at you and say, ah, Who are you commanding me when you belong to me? I mean, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, you can read it from verse 11 to 17. Acts 19, from verse 11 to 17, the Bible tells us that God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body aprons and kerchiefs were taken to the sick and devils see his handkerchief coming and run is there in the Bible then some people say oh is it how easy to get rid of demons so several of them children of the same father 
saw a madman and they said in the name of Jesus that I did boy preach I mean that Paul preaches we command you get out and the devil said Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you the devil said what kind of nonsense is this you who are my slaves you fornicating committing adultery lying cheating coming to tell me the devil to get out the bible said he pounds on them give them thorough beating strip them naked so that they jumped out of the window tonight we are going to command the devil you and I we're going to do something new we're going to pray some new prayers we're going to clear the devil from our homes from our lives from our offices from our churches but you can't join us unless you belong to Jesus Christ you cannot be insane and begin to command demons to move So I'm calling on those of you who have not given your life to Jesus Christ. Those of you who are still living in sin up to this moment. I'm calling on you to run forward. And come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Let the blood of Jesus wash away your sins. Become a child of the living God. So that when we go to war against the devil, the devil will be able to say, Jesus I know, and I know you too. Because some of you are very, very far away. I'm going to count from 1 to 20. But before I say 20, if you want to give your life to Jesus, want to say bye-bye to a life of sin, that you don't want to have anything more to do with the devil, make sure you are already standing before me here. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. As you come, just keep on praying. Begin to talk to Jesus, asking him to save your soul, asking him to forgive all your sins, asking him to wash you clean with his blood. Don't, don't wait for the others. You just keep on praying, even as you come. Five. Six.
seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. Counselors, please move very quickly. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them for just two minutes. Let's pray that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Please pray for them. That the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sins will wash them clean tonight. Please intercede for them. Those of you who are on the way, you have to really hurry up now because I have to pray for salvation in a moment. And if you're already coming, keep coming. And the rest of us, please let's intercede for these people for just. Another one and a half minutes. Thank you. 
counselors. God bless you. Will you move a little faster? Oh, thank you, Lord. Those of you on the way, please hurry up. You are almost there. Finish the journey quickly. And keep coming, even if I'm praying. Just make sure you get there before I finish praying. Keep coming. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I bless your holy name. I thank you for your word. I thank you for bringing these people to Jesus Christ. Now please, Daddy, remember your promise. That whosoever will come unto you, you will know why cast out. They have come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Save their souls in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away all their sins in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. And don't let them ever go back to a world of sin in Jesus' name. From now on, Father, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. And let them serve you till the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. I rejoice with you because from now on the devil is in trouble in your life from today onward by the grace of God I will be praying for you and so I'm going to need your names your address and your prayer requests and our counselors all around you they will give you cards which I want you to feel very quickly and return to the counselors and then you'll be able to go back to your seats. Now, while our new brothers and sisters are busy filling their forms, the rest of us will continue. The Bible says there are two things we must do if we are to get the devil to flee. The first one is to submit to God. Thank God many of us have submitted our lives to Jesus. The second thing is to resist the devil. We are to resist the devil like I've told you earlier on in the name of Jesus. Because in Mark chapter 16 verse 17, Mark 16 verse 17, the Lord himself said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. That's the first thing he said we will do in his name. We will resist the devil in the name of Jesus. Just like David did when he came face to face with Goliath. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 to 51. 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 51. David said, I come against you in the name of Jesus. 
And by the end of the day, Goliath was dead. And so I'm going to ask you to please stand on your feet now. And pray your first prayer with all your heart. Every prayer of tonight must be prayed violently. This is warfare. You lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every Goliath in my life must die tonight. Open your mouth and pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, every Goliath that may still be left in my life must die tonight. I come against every Goliath. Whatever the name, whatever the nature in my life, every Goliath must die tonight. Every Goliath, without exception, in my life, must die tonight. They just must die tonight. Tonight. Not tomorrow. Tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before we proceed further, I want to pray a prayer for you. Lift your hands to the Almighty God. My Father, my God, the Lord of hosts himself, I come before you tonight as your representative to these people. I ask, Lord, that every one of them be covered in the blood of the Lamb. That blood that conquered Satan, let it cover everybody here tonight in Jesus' name. As we go to war against the devil, in your name, Father, let the devil flee in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Now, I know some of you will say, but Daddy, I am not demon-possessed. The devil does not have to live in you to torment you. And I'm going to give you just a few illustrations to show you how the devil can disturb you 
without necessarily living in you. There is an activity of the devil called oppression. What do I call it? Say it loud and clear. Now what is the meaning of oppression? The actual meaning is to sit upon. To sit upon so that the fellow cannot rise up. Some of you will understand that many a times when you want to get up, when you want to break through, when you want to make it, it is as if a certain force will smash you down. In Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 13, Luke 13, verse 11 to 13, the Bible gives us an illustration of a woman who was bent double. And no matter how hard she tried, she just couldn't stand straight. Why? Because there is a spirit holding her down. Years ago, when I was seeing a lorry, the service was on. And there was a woman sitting next to another woman, fat woman, sitting next to a slender woman. The slender woman was sweating profusely. The fat woman was fast asleep. And God opened the eyes of a member of the choir. And she saw that the fat woman was sitting on the neck of the slender woman. She was a young lady. She couldn't keep it to herself. She shouted, Ha! Come down! You better tell the fellow next to you, don't fall asleep here. Because if they fall asleep, it may be they want to sit on your neck. pressing you down shall let you go tonight in Jesus name. You know the testimony of a young man over 50 years old highly educated the principal of a school and was unmarried Simply because he just couldn't open his mouth to say to a girl, I want to marry you. Anytime he tried to say so, something will shut him up. You've had the testimony. Until God intervened. God will intervene in your affairs tonight. They thought he was important. They didn't know there was a force pressing him down, pressing him down, sitting on top of him. The moment God set him free, within six months, he got married. Nine months from the day of wedding, he had a set of twins, two boys. Within two years, another set of twins, another two boys. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, every force pressing me down, deal with them tonight. You better open your mouth and pray. Every force that each time I want to rise, 
will be pressing me down every force that is not allow me to climb every force that is not allow me to soar lord god almighty deal with them tonight deal with them tonight Whatever has been stopping my promotion that is not allow me to reach the heights that the Almighty God planned for me, whatever has been pressing me down, Almighty God, deal with it tonight. Deal with it tonight. I know I'm made for greater things, Lord. Those forces pressing me down. Deal with them tonight. Deal with them tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. And then there is this action of the devil called depression. I'm sure you've heard it before. They say somebody went into depression. Now the word depression and despair, they are relatives. And what leads to despair? What leads to depression? If I have had the time, I would have talked to you about other actions of the devil that will ultimately lead to depression. One of them is called regression. Pushing back. Pushing back. One is called repression. Pushing down constantly. Constantly. Pushing down. You summon it together. It, it, it simply says, Not only is the fellow not making progress, but is going steadily backward. Steadily backward. Steadily downward. Oh, you, we have several examples. Take Judges 16, for example. Judges 16, verse 18 to 30. Judges 16, verse 18 to 30. When the enemy captured Samson, first thing they did, they plucked out his eyes. That was step one. Then they bound him. Step two. Then the Bible said they took him down to Gaza, not up to Gaza, down. To Gaza. Then they put him in prison. Then they asked him to begin to grind corn. To begin to grind corn. Then they decided on a day to ask him to come and dance for the idols. 
a divine champion. The one that Felicians used to run from. <laughs> Went down steadily from blind to bound to taking down to put in prison to grind corn and now to dance for an idol. That's why you find that those who are in depression they need help urgently because depression always lead to suicide. It wasn't long before Samson prayed and said, God, let me die. That position in life that you can reach and begin to ask God to kill you, you will never get there. There are other, other examples, but I think that one is enough. Can I just give you one illustration? You've heard it before too. Some of you know the, the fellow. It's an uncle of mine. An engineer trained in Britain. Very successful. Had a big company of his own. Then the tide turned. Lost everything. Lost money. Lost jobs. Etc. Etc. Couldn't get money to buy ordinary. Buba and Soro. Just ordinary shirt and trouser. Things got so bad. That he had to be taking his wife's rapper. To make a dress. Then she, he made up his mind. He said, death is better than shame. And being a funny fellow, he decided that he was going to commit suicide. But he would attend his own funeral. He said he would go to church. He would sing and dance. Everybody would notice him. And then he would come home and kill himself. But thank God, he had a word. As the preacher was preaching, the preacher said, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said that the God whom we serve is able to deliver us, they did not know how. He had that word and said, oh, I don't know how God can get me out of my present situation, but I refuse to die. The day he was sharing his testimony, he has just bought 40 cars for his employees. Stand on your feet and lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, In the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse to die. Satan, you are the one who will leave me alone. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. I won't die. I'm going to live to declare the glory of God. Satan, you are the loser. I am the winner. I'm a champion of the Most High God. I won't die. Satan, you are the one who will live. You are the one who will live. You are the one who will lose. Thank you, Father. Oh, 
Oh yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, you are the one who will have to leave. Me, I'm not going to die. I'm going to declare the glory of God. The tide has to turn for me, and it's turning tonight, Satan. You are the loser. I am the winner. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Let me talk very briefly about something called obsession. That's another act of the devil. Obsession. It just gets you to focus so much on something a harmful habit to the exclusion of others just one take Solomon first king chapter 11 verse 1 to 4 first kings 11 verse 1 to 4 Solomon's obsession was sex. That's it. So, sex. You know how many wives he had? 700 only. Now when you read that casually and you don't meditate on it, you don't know what it, what it implies. If this man were to sleep with just one wife and one of the wives once in a year he will have to sleep with at least two of them every day for him to be able to return to the original two at the end of the year Which means this fellow called Solomon was having sex at least twice a day. But he wasn't satisfied with that. He got himself 300 concubines. You know what that means? At least sex three times a day. Obsession. Now I know some of you will say, but I'm not Solomon. And but I know some people who must have sex every day, every day. It's not normal. If you know somebody like that, he needs deliverance. It's not food. Is sex food? Ah. <laughs> if you know anyone who must have sex every day, bring him for deliverance. But oh, some people it's not sex. Some people it is food. And you don't have to look far to find them. The mouth must keep going. Every time they must be chewing something, must be chewing something. If the mouth stops, they get they, they become uncomfortable. It's not them, it's the devil. For some people, it is speaking. In fact, one of the ways you know somebody who is in serious trouble with the devil is that. They keep talking. They don't know when to stop. And I just give one illustration because I mean, your 
you, you yourself by now you begin to guess what is your own obsession the lady came and said uh, daddy I need to see you I said oh you are welcome I will see you for five minutes he said oh that's great and then she came in oh I thank the almighty God I've been trying to see you now for six months the first time I came they told me you went to India second time I came they said you went to America the third time I came they said you went to Australia I understand I know you are doing the work of God but you must be a very busy man oh. you are really very difficult to see I say all right now you have seen me oh yes I thank God that I've seen you I know my problem will be over now and uh, I said what is the problem ah okay <laughs> I'm about to tell you now uh, it's actually not a problem because I know Jesus Christ has the ability to solve all problems and now that I've seen you all you have to do is just pray for me and the problems will be over okay so what is the problem oh that's what I'm about to tell you sir after one hour I had to call in my secretary then because by then I had now fully understood oh okay I know the problem I had to call my my secretary in. please take this woman to the prayer room no but I've not told you what I've come for yet I'm just about to tell you I said go ahead go and tell them I, I know you are a very busy man I won't take much more of your time do you know somebody like that no no you may not you, you may think I'm joking I'm not joking one KBC friend of mine gone to be with the Lord now will tell you if you ask him of a particular woman when the woman phones after KBC had done the greeting he will place the phone on the table and continue to do whatever he's doing after one hour you pick up the phone and say hey, so that is so and then place and place the phone down again because the woman is still stand on your feet and say father whatever is my own obsession that is contrary to your will take it away today go ahead talk to the almighty god you know me lord you know me more than i know myself whatever is my obsession that is contrary to your will take it away any form of obsession Lord in my life take it away take it away Take it away. Whatever is my obsession that is contrary to your will, take it away. For some it is food, for some it is sex, for some it's an insatiable hunger for material things. Whatever is my obsession, Lord, that is contrary to your will. Take it away from me. Take it away from me. Take it away, Lord. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. And then it comes to... And I'm jumping some cases now. Let, let's now go to real possession. When we talk about possession, it means the devil has now come in. He's sitting down pretty. In the fellow that have been possessed. The very good example is the madman of Gadara that I mentioned earlier on in Mark 5 verse 2 to 5 15 Mark 5 2 to 15 now how do how do we know someone who is demon possessed it's not necessarily all those who are demon possessed who are walking about naked in the street their own cases are serious enough But there are several people well dressed. And there are demons dwelling in them. In Yoruba land, they call them Wirealasso, the madman who is well dressed. And their cases are far more serious because. I mean, if you are sick, and we know you are sick, it's easy to help you. But they have something in common, whether the one that is dressed or the one that is naked. They engage in self-destructive habits. The madman of Gadara was always cutting himself with stones. And you find people who see it written clearly on the packet of cigarettes. Smoking is injurious to your health. And they chain smoke. When you say to them, why are you doing this? They will tell you, man shall die by something. Some people will die by bullet. Some people will die by accident. They said they want to die by smoking. Some people get drunk steadily. Some people are hooked on cocaine. Or they know this thing is frying their brain. But they keep on doing it. Because a demon is sitting inside. In the example we gave you in Mark chapter 1, from verse 23, that, that man with an unclean spirit, he was in the church. Jesus met him in the temple. That tells you one thing. <laughs> the fact that somebody is in church doesn't mean he's free. When it comes to a case of demon possession at that level, you need help. You need someone with the right anointing to set you free. And you shall be free tonight in Jesus' name. Because it doesn't matter the anointing. And I can assure you God is here tonight. It doesn't matter the kind of anointing. If the fellow who is demon possessed does not want to be free, there's nothing we can do about it. 
or there isn't much we can do about it. And there's a little bit we can do. Some of you will remember the story of a man who came and said, Sir, my wife is a witch. Help me set her free. Woman, your husband said you are a witch. He said, Don't mind him. It is his mother who is a witch. So I said, What shall we do now? And then the Almighty God gave me a word of wisdom. I said to the woman, I am not saying you are a witch. I don't believe your husband. But let's, let me pray a prayer. I say, if there is any evil force dwelling in you, we bind that force. So that that force will no longer be able to disturb your husband. But if there's nothing evil in you, oh, may the Almighty God bless you. Shall I pray the prayer? She said, go ahead, pray. I said, good. But I said, I warn you, if we bind that evil force in you, if it is a snake, I don't know why I said snake, it won't be able to go out to hunt. It will stay inside you and begin to eat from inside and begin to defecate inside. And he said, pray. I said, good. So we prayed. Three months later, when the husband brought her back, she was bloated. Almost three times her normal size. Because the demon in her couldn't go out and began to poison her from the inside. At that stage, she was ready to be free. So we want to pray a dangerous prayer. We want to ask God that if there is anyone close to us who is harboring any evil force and does not want to let that force go, that the Almighty God will bind that force. Are you ready to pray the prayer? Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, if there is anyone close to me harboring an evil force and does not want to let it go, Father, bind the evil force tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command that such an evil force be bound right now. The fellow is not ready to let the evil force to go. I decree, Lord, that the evil force be bound. 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 Thank you, Father. And if there's anyone close to me, if there's any wolf in sheep clothing, harboring an evil force that is working against me, and he or she doesn't want the evil force to go, let the evil force be bound. In the mighty name of Jesus, bound. So, 
<laughs> Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, why you are still standing? You're going to pray another prayer. I say, Father, Father, if I am the one, and I have this evil force in me that I don't know, every plant you did not plant, I'll put it tonight. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Every plant you did not plant in me, Lord, or put it tonight, or put it tonight, or put it tonight, my Father, my God, or put it tonight. Every plant you did not plant in me, or put it tonight. Operate it or not. Every plant that you have not planted in me, Lord, uproot it tonight, uproot it tonight, uproot it tonight. Almighty God, every plant that you have not planted in me, uproot it tonight. Uproot it tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please be seated. So shall it be. I'm about to close. But there's a case worse than demon possession. And that is demon repossession. I mean, somebody was possessed, was set free, and for your information, many of you are already free. But according to Matthew 12, verse 43 to 45, Matthew 12, 43 to 45, the Lord himself said, when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, it will go throughout the deserted places looking for accommodation. And when he can't find one, he said, I'll go and check my former abode. Maybe it is still empty. And then he comes back and finds the place empty, well garnished, and said, ah. Now, in the process of walking about, the demon has met other demons. Even some of them more wicked than himself. So he will go and call them and say, hey, come. My former accommodation is here. And the Lord said, the end of that man will be worse than the beginning. I want to decree tonight, every one of you here, you will end well. Yeah. 
Can I just give you one or two examples? Um, we we'll pray one or two prayers and you'll be on your way. Some of you, some of the elders here will remember a man. They brought him to a Buddha matter. Every part of his body was as stiff as a rod. He couldn't bend the hand. He couldn't bend the legs. Everything was stiff. He came. We recognized that this is not something medical. We prayed a simple prayer. And the one who came is carried in, stiff as anything. He was able to kneel down, was able to wave his hand, and, and we all rejoiced. He came to church for two weeks, and we didn't see him again. So we followed him up. Brother, why are you not coming back to church? Ah, she said. If you go to the hospital and they heal you, won't you come back home? He said, I came to your church. I got my healing. I've come back home. Or oh, is it you who healed me? We said, no, sir. It wasn't a month after that. I was driving from the University of Lagos going to my house and I saw the same man. The hand straight, the legs stiff. This time now, even the mouth is open and cannot be closed. The end is worse than the beginning. That's one example. Give you another. You've had it this before. A man had an obsession. He wanted to be rich. He must be rich, he said. So he got somebody who told him, if you swallow this particular charm, you will be stinkingly rich. But you will die in seven years. Oh, he said, that doesn't matter. At least I would have enjoyed for seven years. So he swallowed the charm and instead of money, nothing came. But whatever he swallowed began to bite him in the inside. When it was about two weeks to seven years, he ran to the church, told us his story. We prayed for him and he vomited the thing. And again, we all rejoice with our brother. But then after some time, we didn't see him again. So we decided to follow up. Brother, what happened? We have not seen you again. He said, ah. They told me that I swallowed the first one wrongly. You mean you have now swallowed the second one, Korea? <laughs> he said, I must have money. I just must be rich. And this time, my money came. And when it was approaching seven years, he thought he was clever. He said, whatever it is that is going to kill me can only kill me in Nigeria. Come follow me to Britain. So he jumped on the plane. He said the weather there is too cold for the demons in Nigeria. <laughs> he died on the plane. I want you to stand on your feet, please, and cry to the Almighty God. Father, <laughs> let me remain forever free. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Let me remain forever free, forever free, 
forever free forever free let me remain forever free let me remain forever free let me remain forever free till i see you in glory let me remain forever free Let me remain forever free. Let me remain forever free for the rest of my life. Let me remain forever free in Jesus mighty name we have prayed please remain standing the Bible says one of you will chase a thousand two of you will put ten thousand to flight I want you to join hands with your neighbor and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, we all agree the devil must leave us alone. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. We all agree. We are all in one accord. The devil must leave us alone. Alone. We agree. We are in one accord. We all agree, Lord. The devil must leave us alone. The devil must leave us alone. We all agree, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Still with your hands joined, please. I want you to pray again with this corporate anointing and say, Father, we all command Satan, leave our families alone. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. We all command. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, leave our families alone. Leave our families alone. Thank you, Father. We all agree. We all command. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, leave our families alone.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. And I'm going to pray for you in a minute. Just remain standing for just one more minute. To remain free, you must learn to witness. The madman of Gadara came to Jesus. Jesus said, no, no, no. Go and tell the people what I've done for you. You must learn to serve. When God said, Mary Magdalene free, she became a divine treasurer. Number three, as quickly as possible, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those three are very, very crucial. And you must make sure you get those points. Now I'm about to pray for you. Lift your hands to the Almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord of hosts, I thank you for tonight. Your word has gone forth and your word has delivered your people. I accept my thanks in Jesus' name. Father, it is in your name that I decree. Satan, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off the people of God. Take your hands off their marriages. Take your hands off their children. Take your hands off their businesses. Take your hands off their ministries. Satan, take your hands off in Jesus' name. My Father, my God, I thank you. Because it is done. For I have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead, lift your hands to the Almighty God and just bless His holy name. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration, just praise Him. 